Hello, welcome to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. This is your host, Iggy. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Iggy's Toy Parade. So, let's begin. We'll start off with a song. G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe, fighting man from head to toe, on the land, on the sea, and the air. Wow, the power just went out for a second. It's storming like crazy right now here in Jacksonville. And a lot of uh, thunder and lightning. Sounds like artillery in the uh, five miles away or something. Not that I would know what that sounds like. Actually, I do know what that sounds like. Uh, when I was in the Army, we did some training at a place called Hohenfels. I got to tell you this story before we jump into this because it's kind of neat. We Our bivouac was next to the ruins of a gothic style church and the church sat up on a hill with some creepy looking trees you know with their branches all gnarly and hanging down like this and it, it, if you had an imagination you could work yourself up into getting scared and in fact i did scare one of the guys by telling him that there was a woman in the church who wanted to marry him and that when he lifted up her veil, her face would be crawling with maggots and flies because she'd been dead for a couple weeks and her eyeballs were sunken in and he was getting freaked out. And after I let the uh, story si simmer in his imagination for a few minutes, I started going, Elton, his name was Elton, Elton. I'm waiting for you. And he said, knock it off, Iggy. He didn't call me Iggy because that wasn't my name yet. But uh, it had its effect. Anyway, uh, that night, we were in our tent. And on the Armed Forces Network, someone had the radio on and they're playing Armed Forces Network. They're playing music from the 1940s, swing music from the 1940s. And you could hear uh, the artillery guys practicing in the distance. So here we are in Germany in a tent next to this bombed out looking church. And you could hear artillery blasts in the distance and the 1940s music it kind of transported all of us back in time. I was almost afraid to go out the tent and see Sherman tanks sitting there instead of, uh, um, what was our tank? The M M60 A1. Jeez. You know, it's funny guys, how you can say to yourself, I'm never going to forget any of this ever. And as time goes on, you can forget about stuff like a lot of the jar military jargon. I can't remember it. You know, people ask me, you know, what was your MOS or whatever? And I'm like, uh, I don't remember. I was a tank driver. And they said, oh, you were a 19 Echo. And I'm like, yeah. And they said, well, they don't have those anymore. And I'm like, what? Anyway, I think they just call them armor crewmen now. Uh, they would train you on gunner, position, loader, and driver. But back then, it was uh, each uh, thing that you did was separate. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got. I'm going to have to check my uh, journal as we go along because none of the set numbers are on the uh, carded equipment, which you see here. So this, of course, is all 40th anniversary Joes. I found, you know, it's amazing to me how I keep finding these in boxes. Every box I open up, it seems that there's some of these guys in there. I must have gone hog wild buying up this stuff. Anyway, here's set number 30, which is disappointing. Why is it disappointing? Why is it disappointing, Iggy? Well, they released in stores up to set 21, so that means nine other sets were expected to come before this one, which were never promised but never delivered. Um, Hasbro lost confidence in the G.I. Joe project 
and dropped it like a hot potato. Uh, one of the reasons for that is their uh, CEO, I can't remember what his name was. It was His last name, of course, was Hassenfeld. So he was probably the son of one of the uh, Hassenfeld brothers. And he was big into G.I. Joe. He was the same age as me. However, he died suddenly. And with him, a minor sort of revolution took place at Hasbro. And the guy who took over dumped G.I. He couldn't stand G.I. Joe, I guess. I don't know. But uh, these were replaced by the, you know, the ones that are like this big, which Iggy doesn't collect. Uh, I want this. I want the real deal, not the the wannabes. Uh, I know some of you guys out there like to collect those because that's what you had when you were a kid. Usually we like collecting stuff that we had it as a kid. Although I also collect uh, Star Wars and Star Trek, and I, I never had any of that. Or Indiana Jones, I didn't have that as a kid either. But... It's all about when you were younger and what brings back nostalgic memories for you. Okay, so that was set number 30. And I don't think it shows on here what the other sets to come were. No, it does not. But this is what the cards looked like when I was a boy. I, I'm sure some of you out there are old enough to recognize these. Uh, they also, there's one of the sets not released had his um, snowsuit that you see here and his helmet and rifle. Uh, this one was the snowshoes with the ice pick pack and cartridge belt. Uh, unfortunately, they, they must have made some because I've seen pictures of it. And uh, the G.I. Joe Collectors Club had their hands on some of them. They had uh, number 25, which was the uh, Air Force dress uniform. And I think they also had set number 22 or 23, which was an Army set and came with a, a, a helmet, backpack, a, a field jacket, cartridge belt and a rifle it was uh even came with a helmet it was a nice set if you bought that set you could outfit your joe so that i think if they would have uh sold that set they would have made a profit but like i said when uh the ceo of uh hasbro died at age 47 that was toast for gi joe unfortunately I wrote a letter to uh, Hasbro on the 50th anniversary asking, you know, what can we expect? And I'm not going to say it was a snotty letter, but it didn't seem very friendly in return saying they're not going to do that. So there you go. We're out of luck. Okay, now this one is Beachhead Assault. This is an awesome set because you get the backpack... Uh, E-tool, canteen, hand grenades, bayonet, rifle, and cartridge belt. So this is a very nice set to have. And uh, let's see, what set number was that? Looking, 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 keep on the looking. I know, so Beachhead Assault was set number eight. Okay, and the next set we're going to look at is the Marine Parachutist. Was there a lot of Marine Parachutist guys? I, For some reason, I feel like this should have been with the Army sets. But there it is. This was the very first set that I got when I was a boy. My dad went to Chicago on a business trip, and when he came back, he had a sailor, and he had this. So that was kind of interesting that I had a sailor with a parachute. Um, so what set was the parachutist? It was set number 20. I 
And according to my records, I only got two. Well, that doesn't make sense because the Foot Locker I showed you had two parachutes in it. And it says here that I only got two sets and here's one in here. So I'm guessing that the other parachute came with the uh, Scramble Pilot. Uh, so the next setup is Army and it has the backpack, has a web belt, uh, canteen, mess kit, and e-tool. And that was set, what set was that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's set number 10. And next up here is the Air Force life raft. And that was what? Set number four. Action pilot set number four. And this is from... What set was this come with? Oh, this is from set number 13. I think I've shown you the other pieces of this already in a previous video. And then this is the first of all of them. Uh, this was Action Soldier Combat Attack. And it was set number one, the first set that Hasbro released in 2003. And as you know, by the end of 2004, all this stuff was going clearance. So I remember going with my friend Doug, and we were going from store to store, and we went to a KB store that had them stacked up on the floor. And they were waist high stacked on the floor. And then I picked out, I think, 15 of them at the time, and Doug did too. And it was almost impossible to get home with all that stuff. It didn't fit in my truck. I was afraid to put it in the back because what if it blew out the back of the truck? You know, I bought a sofa at Goodwill for a hundred bucks and it was a retro looking sofa. It was really cool looking and it was in very good shape. It was a hundred bucks and my brother and I drove out of the parking lot and a cushion bounced out of the back and hit the road and a guy came pulling up behind us jumped out of his car took the cushion and drove off with it and i'm like what's he gonna do with one cushion he saw that it came out of our truck and he still took off with it and i'm like there's a german word for that i think it's called an arschloch or arschloch 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 I, i'll leave it to your imagination what that means but I think you've already figured it out. Okay, so that's all the different sets number. I was re relieved when I found this because uh, in the other groups that I showed you, I was kept thinking, man, I'm still missing something. So when I found this, I felt a little better. There might still be more. I don't, I don't know, but I'll find out because there's still some some more things in storage. I think I have enough stuff to take take me through. Uh, the end of summer and then after that I'm done I'm pretty sure I'll be done but of course uh, when my brother is is finished with his Christmas shopping I'll probably have just as much stuff again because he he uh, gets me a lot of awesome things okay this is one of the of the 40s I like to call this stuff the 40s and the reason why I want to show it to you is because he has the prototype fatigue cap, which is made of cloth. You know, you can see why they wouldn't, uh, why they switched over to the plastic, because look at all, look at all this fine detail, sewing detail that they had to do to make this hat. I wonder if this hat could double duty as a German M43. At first glance, that's what it looks like, doesn't it? 
So let's take a look at this. This one is a blonde. Okay, guys. I don't imagine this other Joe has a cloth cap, so you've seen the plastic ones already. Is it going to come out? There it goes. Yeah, here's the example of the plastic one. And I've showed you these figures before, so you know what to expect here. And the only reason I can remember what sets these came from is because I wrote it down in my journal here. That These hash marks represent how many I bought of each set. So most of them is just two. This one was three. Three, 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 three. Two, two, two. One of them is just one, and that's the dress Air Force pilot. Okay, guys, that's it for Iggy. Thank you for getting Iggy with it. I want to um, thank you for coming along for the ride. And uh, I'm not sure what I'll do next. Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you something funny that I found in the box with these G.I. Joe things. I'm not sure how it got in there, but this is it. It's a it's an oil barrel. And if you're doing dioramas, this is actually a cool thing to have cuz you could paint this and make it look like it has, you know, oil stains on it or petrol stains or whatever you wanted to do. You could make this look rusty and uh make it a diorama. Uh, I bought a number of those with the uh Soldiers of the World set. And uh that was kind of a strange thing to buy, though, a bunch of oil barrels. But there it is. You could recreate that scene from the movie uh, Battle of the Bulge where they roll all the fuel tanks down the hill and then set them on fire to stop the German tanks from getting them. Okay, guys, I think that's it. So um, thank you for those of you who've uh, taken out time to watch this and also uh, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate uh, you guys who have stuck around and, and also you new guys. And I hope that you'll stick around too. So that's it for Iggy. Let's uh, say goodbye and maybe we can all meet up at Woolworth's lunch counter and have a milkshake or something. Didn't that sound good? The only problem is, is there's no Woolworth's lunch counter anymore. Although in Bakersfield, California, there's an old Woolworth's and inside the Woolworth's was a very large lunch counter and they preserved it and they're still serving food there. And I hope it's on my bucket list to one day go there and get a, a hamburger Okay, guys, that's it for me. I want to thank you, and I'm going to say so long.